Welcome everyone. Just remember before we get started, if you want to download the project links, it will be down below in the description. Just all you got to do is enter your email and it's completely free. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we'll be uh, continuing our uh, GUI and continuing our profile uh, as both of them are not too difficult. So we'll kind of combine it into this one video. So, okay. First, I want to be able to uh, show and hide all the uh, actual profile inventory and stuff like that using the buttons. So I want to make the buttons do things. So uh, what we'll do is we'll connect a signal for all of these into our GUI. So let's connect the press button for each of these. So that way we have, uh, well, a signal, right? Now we're going to create a helper function uh, that is essentially just hide um, profile stuff. So let's say hide GUI. And essentially what we'll do is we're going to hide uh, and disable a bunch of things. So uh, for example, what that means is we'll have this quest and we're going to disable it. So we're going to say disabled equals true. And I think I actually said we're not going to use the disabled. So uh, I guess I lied <laughs> and we are going to, and I'm going to take this for each one for the inventory uh, and then profile. And we can just say profile there. And then I'm going to take again, the profile itself and then hide that. So I'm going to copy paste this and just hide the inventory and the profile or the uh, quests like so. And now we have uh, a way to hide everything. Now, essentially what we'll do is just call this no matter which button is being pressed, but depending on which one is being pressed, what we can do. So for example, for the quest one, we can uh, disable uh, or sorry, in here, what we'll do is actually say false for all of these. And then we want to disable the one that we're on. So if I click on the quest, I want to disable the quest button. So that way I, I kind of know I'm in the quest button. And then we're also going to uh, hide or show the quest. So I'm going to show the quest item. And now I can copy it. Whoops. Copy this for each one of these. And uh, adjust them accordingly. So this one's the profile. Profile, I'll just copy that. And this is for the inventory. And there we go. Now, uh, feel free to uh, adjust all of these for get node. I might do that after the video. Um, so you'll see in the next video that I've changed these, but this should work. Uh, and now let's adjust our theme because if you recall, uh, I ended up saying that we're not going to use the disabled, but it seems like we are. So in the button, go to disabled. And what we'll do is we'll take the pressed and put that as the disabled. So now when I hit play, go into here, go into escape. And if I click this, it's now disabled. So it as if I'm in the profile, if I click inventory, et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay. Now what we can do is on ready. I want to start in the profile, if that makes sense. So I'm going to copy that into the ready function. So I'm going to, essentially go into the profile. Now in the profile in here, I'm going to have some things. So one thing I'm going to have is a label. Uh, and we'll probably add these as we go along and in terms of functionality. But for now, what we're going to do is uh, add our script profile, add this to our scripts folders, player, and we create a, a GUI folder for here as well. Save this, create. And in here, what we'll do is I'm going to say, I'm going to rename this to stats label. And now what I can do is I can get node oops, stats label, and we're going to adjust the text accordingly. So what we can do here is first we can say player layer, uh, layer health, and we can use the percent s and then new or new line like so uh, and we can actually put this inside the string like that and we'll essentially add or present all the stats so i can copy paste this and change all of these to the ones i want so i'll show three so i'm going to have attack and defense so I'm going to remove the last one here. So we have health 
attack, uh, defense. Okay. Now, what are these percents though? Well, these percents allow me to uh, essentially add a new thing. So I actually have to do it right here, uh, right after that string. So I'll say percent, and then I can put in an array of the numbers. Now I could put just numbers for now, uh, and I might actually do that for the attack and defense. But for the health, what I'll do is I'm gonna try to find the player. Now, how do I find the player? Well, there's a lot of ways, but one way is we can uh, get the grouping. So what we can do here is say variable player. And in the ready function, we can say player is equal to get groups. And if we go into the get groups uh, or in the groups node, we can find the actual node that we'll need. So there's a lot of uh, built-in functions for the group that allow us to do this. Now I wanted to show uh, essentially where you would find these. Uh, I couldn't find them in the engine, so I found the website. Uh, and you can just search up Godot groups online and you'll find this link, uh, or I'll just link it down below. Uh, and now we can actually find some of the functions that we'll need. So here, uh, here are most of the scripts on the bottom. So if we scroll to the bottom, we'll find uh, ready, add to groups. This is not what we want because that adds something to the group, right? Now there's also this, there, uh, which is call groups. That's probably not what we want because that's a signal. Now this is probably what we want. So get tree and then get nodes in the group. So let's head back to our project. And in our uh, thing here, we can say player is equal to get tree but get nodes in a player. And this will give us the player. So if I print the player node or the, uh, the variable here, and I play, I should be able to see the object of the player. Now this is an array. So if I call the first one, that will print the actual object, right? So if I do this again, this will print the actual player. And now the cool part about this is I can print its health or I can get access to the health of the player. So now I can pop that in right there and delete the printed function there. And now we have access to the player's health. Now, alternatively, we can also add the damage. So why don't we do that? We'll add damage here and we'll also add defense. So we'll have to actually add those into the player itself. So in the player script, Let's head over here. So we already have damage. So we can also add uh, defense. This is an int, and we can say zero for now as the default. But now, if we hit play, we can go to our profile, and we can see here our health is five, our attack is two, and our player defense is zero. Now, obviously, we're going to want to move that so that way it's in the actual profile itself, which is probably around there. And in order to test this, we can say player stats. Uh, and we can go back to our GUI and we can see here that it centers right there. And if you ever want to move it around, we can always just move around the actual profile node. And now if I hit play, we can test it one more time. And there we go. All right. Now, uh, there was one little issue, which was the spacing. So let's Make sure there's no space right after that new line. All right, and there we go. That is how we create the uh, dynamic uh, profile. All right, so in the next video, we'll get started in the inventory, and it'll be fun. Uh, and yeah, so I'll see you all in the next lecture.